Hey everybody. Yeah. It's Monday. Look at your bald head. Yeah, I know. I'm just so you I've gotten here, so man, used to like putting, shining. Okay, fuck putting like to... wigs and yeah, hats see, on and stuff. He's trying to guilt me, guilt trip me no, into putting on no, the show I'm not. already. I'm no, gonna put I'm on not. the show. You're overthinking it. I'm fine. I'm All I said was look show. at your bald head. Okay, there you go. <laughs> there you go. We saw a fucking we, we saw a fucking movie the other day. That was yesterday. Last night we Last watched it. Last night we watched yeah. it. This is one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen. This movie is like almost kind of like the spir- like the spiritual fucking successor to fucking Manos Hands of Fate. It wasn't that bad. No. It was but- just it was weird. It had like a really <sighs> So this came out in 1973. It's called yeah. Messiah of Evil. Yeah. And Shudder just added it. I'd never seen it. It's got a bunch of other titles, too. Like, it yeah. was released under the title Dead People. It was released under the title Return of the Living Dead, like, oh, before yeah, that yeah. movie actually came out. And George Romero tried to sue, but he wasn't he didn't succeed because they're like, hey, you don't have rights over the phrase Living Dead. This one, it kind of gave me the same vibe as early Romero meets let's scare jessica to death meets deathbed the bed that eats yeah uh it wasn't that bad well no i'm just saying but it that it kind of had like a bad. vibe that was kind of similar to that yeah deathbed the bed that eats the, the title similar. was the best thing about yeah. it um and also the part where the bed ate the fried chicken yeah that was also like that was high hilarity right there the, this movie the reason why it reminds me of manos hands of fate is because both movies are actually pretty good ideas. It's just that they didn't quite have the budget to um, to execute that story. This one, they had more of a budget. It's executed a lot better than Manos Hands of Fate. But it is fucking strange. It's, it's, it's a, surreal. It's a very strange movie. It's a very good idea. Um, it could have been... It, you could reshoot this movie. Uh, you know, with with modern technology and keep most of the story the same, and it would work. It, it does. It kind of works the way it is. Yeah, because some of the shots way. and stuff are like yeah. pretty creepy. So it's I think trip. it's and it doesn't. I mean, it has a story, but You're it's really a lot s- of it is kind of left to the imagination, yeah. I guess. Which, it, like I said, it's kind of just let's scare Jessica to death is almost. Yeah like the same exact vibe as this the the movie begins and ends with a mo- with a female doing a monologue you're not really sh- she's evidently in an insane asylum telling you this story yeah of what happened to her you're not sure if it, <clears throat> if the story really happened or not and the story is what seems to be kind of like a zombie outbreak it's but like, there's more to it than that. Yeah, there's they're not a, really zombies, though. No. I mean, they're kind of... I don't know. We'll get into it's that. It's kind of like something out of them that uh, John Carpenter flick where, uh, like, a demon shows up. What was the name? The, what was the one where there's a demon doing all this different shit? And it's like one of Carpenter's worst movies. Which one? Prince of Darkness? Prince of Darkness. It kind of reminds me of Prince of Darkness. You're not really sure what's going on. Some dude comes out of the hills back in the 1800s and starts spreading this religion that somehow causes people to become cannibals. And they're still out there. And it, it it's, it's quite convoluted. For me, it was. I was losing track of it. But it was kind of cool to watch. Yeah, it's a really, yeah. it has like a really high rating on Shutter. It has five skulls. Yeah. And a lot of the other reviews, there's not a shit ton of other reviews of this, but some other horror channels have reviewed it. And most of them like seem to really dig it. They said, now you really have to be in the mood to watch it. Yeah, it's 70s. Because it's 70s as shit. And yeah. it's like, it's one of those really surreal, like dreamlike yeah. kind of things where it's like, you're not entirely sure what's going on, but there's, but there's some really, really nice yeah. shots in it. And like some of the sequences are really cool. Yeah. You just have to kind of like just let it. And there's characters wash in here. You're not sure you. what it is. There's one hot '70s chick. She looks like a model walking around. She's got a nice rack. And then there's this dude with his two girlfriends. Yeah. And and, and, you, and he and he's he's like a pathological liar, I guess, about how rich he is. And he's got one girl. One girlfriend is, has the mind of a child. That's what he said. He called her a mind of a child. She's like a dingbat. And then the other <laughs> girlfriend is a little more sophisticated. They pick on her. All kinds of weird shit happens. Then they, then the girls try to to screw the hot girl, and, it's, and or at least try to talk her into it. It didn't work. Not that I remember. That never did work, did it? No, I don't. think Yeah, it, did. it didn't work. It's it it's it, it's slutty. This is it's, a, it's yeah, it's a weird it's ass movie. It's good. It's a weird it's ass movie. It's fucking weird, man. 
like I said, it reminds me very, very strongly of Let's yeah. Scare Jessica to death. It's also kind of like a an all all star Hollywood Z lister cast. In other words, you'll you recognize a lot of these people. But they're kind of like the Z listers from Hollywood. Well, I mean, Alicia yeah. Cook Jr., who was in fucking everything. He was in House on Haunted Hill. He yeah, was in, like fucking, he's in everything. This is different le- levels. Some, in some in of them that. are C listers, you know, but a lot of them are Z. They got the dude who played Leon from fucking uh, uh, Blade Runner. He he's just in it for a few seconds. He's like one of the extras. You well, see the him. the girl that plays or the woman that plays the lead, Marianna Hill, she was in a bunch of like TV back then, like Mannix and shit yeah. like that. So it's like all these people are kind of recognizable. Yeah, one of the, one of the bums that's in there, <clears throat> the bum that's in there, he's he's like he was like in a bunch of Twilight Zones and he, yeah, that's he, a, that's a, that's Alicia Cook Jr. That is his name. Okay, yeah, yeah he's like your standard bum character. Yeah, he's in it. Yeah, he was in a fuck ton of movies. Uh, just, it's a trip, man. Boom so I'm trip. gonna try. Okay, so fun fact: the uh, the directors of this are uh, Willard Hoyk, I think is how you pronounce it, and Gloria Katz, it's husband and wife. Uh, fun fact: I think I already said that they work a lot with George Lucas. They yeah. were actually the two that wrote the original screenplays for American Graffiti and Indiana Jones: The Temple of Doom, and these two might have or at least uh willard hike might have done a uh rewrite on the original script of star wars uh so he might have had his hand in that mix too and they would later go on to direct howard the duck which i don't care if people say howard the duck is a bad movie i really have a lot of affection for howard the duck it's a weird as shit movie too but let me see okay so let me see if i can describe this movie it, in a way, conceptually, it seemed like it was really ahead of its time. Mm-hmm. It has a Lovecrafty type of shit going on, too. Yeah. And I think that was deliberate. Yeah, well, it's kind of like what I was saying. It kind of reminded me of like one of the George Romero's takes on fucking Lovecraft stuff. That's, yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of, it's not... This is like early Romero, like Martin type. Yeah. Uh, or what was that weird one that he did about the witch late, the, the Coven of Witches? Uh, I, I watched that one not too long ago on Shudder, too. Yeah. That was also a weird-ass movie. And this was, like, the early 70s were a weird time. You're sitting there saying, my hair is redefining God. God. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, re- I'm redefining God. And then... And then <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> then somebody says, uh, the, the, the quote... She's got a nice rack. Is that on the Blu-ray cover? It's it, gonna be. It ought to be. Yeah, it, it, it ought to be. She got a nice rack. It's just it's, <laughs> season you know, of the witch. Thank you. That's, of the, witch, that's yeah. the name of that it's movie. Nice yeah. That's yeah. So that's you know, it, it's there's eye candy in it. There's fucking good. There's interesting locations that kind of take you back to the seventies if you were around during that time. The way mobile gas stations looked. Um, I feel like mobile maybe paid for some yeah, product placement. I think there might have been some product because there's some mobile. significant shit that happens at like a mobile, a mobile gas, gas station, station. Yeah. and they show the sign and shit yeah. too. <coughs> then they go inside of theaters and they and you actually can see the candy rack inside the theater and you go like, oh man, that's the old the old milk dud box. Yeah. And the old fucking uh, Nestle Crunch bars. Yeah. The way the old wrappers mm, looked and Nestle everything. Crunch. I remember when I was a kid, I bit can't... of honeys. They had bit of honeys in there. You know what? It's like I never liked those when I was a kid, but I kind of developed a taste for them when yeah, I got older. Good, yeah. For some reason, I was when I was a kid, I thought they were gross, but I don't know. When I got older, I liked them. Yeah. But so I'm gonna try and explain what goes on in this movie, and I'm not entirely sure, so I'm just gonna tell yeah, you that right out the gate. Yeah, it's kind of hard to know what. It's happened. it's super bizarre. Yeah. So so at the so it's bookended by like you said this narration by the main character who is in an asylum. So we're not entirely sure if all the shit that happened in between the, the sandwich of her narration yeah. um, is like just her imagination or I kind of think it's not, but you know, whatever. So you have that. And then she's playing this woman. Her name is Arletty, which is weird. I was yeah, like, I, would I, that be I never heard anybody named yeah. that. Said, yeah. Maybe there is. I don't know. Yeah. So she's named that. And she says that she's been getting letters from her dad and her dad is like this weird, like artist type dude. And he left her and the mom and went to this kind of seaside town called, I thought it was called Point Dune, but I, the Wikipedia page says Point Doom with an M, like D-U-M-E. So I don't know which one it was. I didn't, I didn't have the uh, closed captioning on, so I didn't really know. Probably So yeah. So she's like, so her dad starts like writing her these weird letters and like they get weirder and weirder and then they start like coming less and less and she starts getting worried about him. So she decides to go to this remote like seaside town and see what the hell 
There you go. Yeah. Oh my god. Just keep going. I know. And so you, you know have, I can't do you gotta that. You got to have a resistance. You know I can't do that. You got to have a resistance. It's like he puts on the wig and then he he sits there like that like I'm supposed to react and then <laughs> no, I re- no, no, I do no. react and then no, he gets no, mad. No, no, no. It but yeah, so it didn't happen. Okay, I'm going to pretend it didn't, it didn't happen. happen. <laughs> so she goes to this town and she goes in the in her dad's house which is this big, I mean, he's got these weird ass like paintings, like he's painted all over the walls. Like he painted, remember we thought it was inside a mall for a second because yeah. there's like these kind of like there's Trump Loy paintings yeah, of yeah. Uh, escalators and yeah. like there's all these like creepy looking people like on the walls. There's a very, very 70s uh, platform bed that's like hanging from chains in the sense. middle of the, yeah. which I thought was very yeah. nice. And uh, so there's that, but then she gets to the house and nobody is, there like her dad isn't there and all the townspeople are like super weird because i think even before she gets in the town and when she stops at the mobile station remember there's that like super creepy dude that's like standing there and... yeah he's they've got this dude that shows up and he's he's like in it a lot he he actually does a great job man with this i kinda... think that guy was not an actor they no just no, thought, no he yeah. just he was the torgo of the fucking movie that's that's why i was yeah, like he's the torgo yeah the if you guys know who the torgo is he's the torgo of the movie I he's, take care of the place. Yeah, the he's an albino away. black dude. All yeah, right. and he's like tall. He's, he's like fucking huge. He's yeah. like six foot eight or some shit. Yeah, and he and his line delivery and the shit that he does is fucking trip. He's eating fucking mice and chewing on what one. And he's the Torgo of and he's collecting bodies and living people and driving them places and you just got to see it, man. And it's he's, a, this is a weird ass. Yeah, movie, and he's you, you know basically you know are you here <laughs> for the festival or it's a, it's some kind of ritual. You here for the ritual? The waiting is the what waiting. They call yeah, it. and he's like she's like no, and he's like oh, oh, but he's definitely the Torgo of the movie. If you've seen fucking Hands of Fate, yeah, Manos, 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 the Hands of Fate. Hands, Hands of Fate. Yeah, Hands, the Hands of Fate. Hands, Hands of Fate. <laughs> hands, Hands. Yeah, hands, Hands. But yeah, so so she gets there and then she ends up meeting. Oh, okay. So I, I was like, well, how does she meet these like weird swinger people? But she ends up going to it's the art. It's a thruple. It's a, yeah. It's that's, a what, that's what it is. <laughs> I hate that word. It's a thruple. Like, like I understand where it came from, but I was yeah, like, yeah. People, come on, you can come up with a better neologism than that. But um, yeah, so she goes to the art gallery thinking that because her dad's an artist and he supposedly sold some of his paintings there that these people know where the fuck he went. They pretend like they don't know who he is or that he never came there and they didn't sell the paintings and it's just like this whole weird thing and everyone's super standoffish and she just kind of wanders around looking fucking lost and everything. And then she ends up meeting this dude whose name is Tom, but with an H. <laughs> huh, Tom? No, yeah. it's T-H-O-M. <laughs> Sorry, that was an MST joke. So anyway, um, and he has two girlfriends. And he says he's from Portugal and he's a duke or some shit. I don't know. He's like blowing shit out of his ass. He's lying. And uh, they, well, they're like interviewing Elisha Cook Jr.'s bum, like drunken bum character in this hotel room because Tom says he's interested in legends. And so the bum is telling them about this legend about this town that every hundred years there's like a blood moon and then there's a dark stranger that comes and all the townspeople like wait out on the beach with like bonfires and they're waiting for this dark stranger to come back and then they all turn into something. So at first, because at first when we were first watching it, because a couple of people that get killed off screen, uh, they said, oh, they look like they were chewed up by dogs. And there's like, um, I think she hears like something in the background and she's like, oh, that didn't really sound like dogs. So at first Tom was like, is this werewolves? This is werewolves. Uh, yeah. And I'm just like, I don't know if it is werewolves though. It's I, like, I couldn't I really, I said Mas- to go that Messiah direction. of Evil doesn't really sound like a werewolf movie. Yeah, but the, the title was made after the movie was d- done. I'm trying to <laughs> Probably. It, but it I ends up it's, not, it's not werewolves. Though. I think they, I think they considered it possibly become being a werewolf movie at one, one time, one point. I kind of think that the movie was rewritten. During the time, I kind of feel like they wanted to have a monster that wasn't yeah. real identifiable, yeah. in the sense that because well, they ended up with I well, I, they, yeah, that's what I mean. So they kind of wanted to keep the monster because it's not even really a monster; it's just this weird. It's like a cult of dead, a cult uh, of people that have come back from the dead, I guess. Yeah, it's like and they call them undead, but they're not dead though. They don't no, die. It's no. like it's almost like a disease. Yeah. But it turns you into a cannibal. And then like at the end when they talk about the dark stranger that came there like a hundred years ago, and he said that he had been in the Donner Party and that he ate people at the Donner Party and that but I was like, So is he like a Wendigo? 
So maybe he's turning people into Wendigos. I don't know. I don't. But I was. I was I like don't the, think the Wendigo concept. They don't think. They maybe I'm thinking it, too much about it. Well, but the... <laughs> well, and they kind of look like vampires too. Like their eyes start to bleed. Yeah. And they don't feel pain anymore, and they start like their body temperature goes way down. Yeah. And then, because remember, there's that great scene where one of the one of the thruple. Yeah. Goes into a Ralph's supermarket. And there's nobody in there. It's like the middle of the night, but it's still open. And she goes in there and then she goes, it doesn't seem like anybody's in there. But then when she goes to the back, like where the meat section is, like all the townspeople are in there just like eating raw meat out of the fucking, uh, out of the butcher case. And it's just like, that's actually a really good scene. I liked that, uh, that a lot. But so I don't know. And I mean that scene and the scene where the other girl, uh, goes to the movies and she goes to the movie theater and there's like nobody in there except like a couple people. And then as she sits there, like watching the trailer or whatever trailers, like people like creepy townspeople start coming in and like sitting all around, like behind her and stuff. And she doesn't really realize what's going on. And then she turns around and she's like, Oh shit. You know what I mean? And then, and then basically they eat her. Yeah. I mean, they ate, they don't show that, but that's what the implication is. Like everybody jumps on her and like starts eating her. So they're like, they're not dead. They're so they're cannibal. not zombies, but they're, yeah. yeah, but they're like, it's almost like a disease, like a vampire type of thing, but then it makes them cannibals. So that's yeah. why I thought it was kind of like a, maybe a, like a Wendigo situation. Yeah. But then the whole thing about the dark stranger returning when there's a blood moon and the, like everybody waiting by the ocean. And I think they even say at the end that like the chems comes from the ocean. So I was like, that's kind of Lovecrafty. Yeah. That's kind of where I got that. Underneath the water. Yeah. And uh, then she, then she, uh, I guess, wakes up and she's in the mental asylum and she says they somehow saved her and took her to the, and then, then you're like, man, that bitch was hallucinating the whole thing. That didn't happen. I thought though, you that, don't know. that they let her go because they wanted her to like tell the world Maybe. about it because Maybe. they wanted that. That was the whole thing. They had come to like to this town and it was like spreading because yeah. everybody in the town was getting it. Like it, it was hard to tell. I mean, yeah, it was hard to tell. It's really it hard to describe a, this movie if you haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> a, a better version of this would have been Dead and Buried. All right. Was similar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now no that you say. Now okay. no that you bring that up. But, um, but this is still pretty good for what it is. You just have to trip out. You have to be in the 70s kind of mood. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know. Mr. Roboto says, so 30 days of night. It is like some, I did see another review that kind of compared like thematically, but otherwise it's nothing the same. No, they're not really, they're not vampires. I mean, they're not, they look pale. And like I said, their eyes bleed and stuff, but they don't die. They're not undead. Really. They're just, it's like they get a disease and it makes them cannibals. The tone is similar. And you can, and you have to burn them. You can't like, you can't just stab them because they'll get back up. The tone is kind of similar to what I remember Rabbit being, kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. Not as competent, but I think Rabbit had a better budget, and it was a little more coherent. This could this could use a streamlined edit, I, but there, I don't know how much movie would be left if you did that. I kind it's of, 70s. It's all over the place. It's like an art film. Yeah, I do kind of feel like yeah. during the 70s, there were a lot of these. And I think um, the Wikipedia page talked a little bit about, you know, the horror uh, writer, Kim Newman. And uh, he writes a lot about horror. And he was saying that, you know, in the 70s, probably between Night of the Living Dead and, you know, like the early 80s when slashers and stuff like that started taking over, there was this kind of, he calls it the American nightmare, where it's just like they're there was a lot of opportunity for these kind of like weird ass idiosyncratic like filmmakers to make these cheap ass movies that would get released by like major studios. And because I think actually this movie was picked up, I think by 20th century Fox, I want to say or something like that. Um, Unless I'm totally remembering that wrong. But so, so I feel like there's, there was this time period where everybody's making this weird ass shit. Cause even a lot of like George Romero's early movies were super weird like i said like season of the witch and even the crazies was a little bit weird and uh you know martin and so it it was just kind of like in the what was going on at the time like i don't know if it was the drugs or if everybody was just just seeing what they could do so a lot of movies that came out around this time period had this really surreal like nightmarish kind of where it's like they they're not really all that plot centric you can't really like everybody in this movie I don't know what their deal is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like why the the fake Portuguese count with the two girlfriends? Like, where yeah. did like was he supposed to be the dark stranger? 
Like, was that what they were implying? Like, I didn't really get that. Um, you know, the the woman who came to see her dad, it's like, what was her deal? Like, They're why, all just ways of getting your... She was just, like, walking around like she was on Quaaludes all the yeah. time. It's just, like, it's just very, very strange. It's a very strange movie. It's just a way of getting your friends into the movies, I think. <laughs> I guess. All right. You're reading into it too much. That's, that, that's who was involved, and that's who was in the movie. So they just made characters for them. It, it's just, it was movies from another time. There it was before cable. There were a lot more theaters. It was it was a lot more theater culture was a lot more prevalent. People went to movies a lot more often because TV really sucked. All right, um, the technology sucked. There wasn't much in terms of there was only a couple channels. You know, you might live in a place where there's only like two or three television channels, and you might only be able to get two of them really well. The other one you have to adjust the damn rabbit ears. Nah, fuck that. I don't <laughs> It's like that, you know? Too much trouble. So there were a lot of theaters, and um, so there wasn't any kind of, there wasn't a lack of theater space or time. You know what I mean? It was, nowadays, if you have a theater, that fucker's crammed full of fucking <coughs> expensive movies that some studio made, and they want to return. They want to make money on that thing. Uh, well, you know, maybe not in the past couple of years as, as AMC's falling apart, but that was how that business worked well back then in this particular time you could take a small movie that didn't cost much to make that a studio bought for cheap and they still had space to put it up space and time to put it up onto a theater onto a screen and hopefully make some money off of it did they make much money probably not because they didn't continue it that I was, feel like this was kind of more a drive-in type of thing. Yeah, those too. Those they had those. And um, honestly, until I think it got like a kind of a nice special edition yeah. recently. Yeah. But prior to that, really, the only way you could see this movie yeah. was on one of those. Remember, you buy those big like DVD packs of like fifty drive-in yeah. classics, and they were all like in the public domain. Could've so like Night of the Living Dead and shit was right. on there. So this usually turned up on those right. kind of kind of things. You have to understand that at that time, you know what I mean, and Jenny and I caught the tail end of it, uh, a drive-in a drive-in movie theater was really just an underage love hotel. That's yeah. where all the high school students fucking took the car to park so they could get cracking. <laughs> you see those fucking cars bouncing in the back. Let's go to the back. You fucking, yeah, you could hear them back there. Yeah, <laughs> And it's like, it was wilder than you think because not only were you and the girlfriend in the back seat, your boy and his girl were in the front seat. So it was group sex, too. That sucks giving them the front seat. Cause then well, you maybe get, we like, might fun. trade up. <laughs> so everybody had to know each other real well. <laughs> you might only have one car. <laughs> like, get that foot out of my face. <laughs> so, hey, Tom, 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 look. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he just did funny shit, you know. It was like, well, he had to have know. a good sense of humor back then. That's true. Yeah, it was another time. So maybe, well, maybe that's why, like, a lot of these weird-ass movies got made, because people weren't really watching them. Exit, there you go. It was filler. <laughs> it was filler, a lot of it. You know, they had time and space for that. It would be the equivalent of, like, a fucking YouTube channel. You know what I mean? You needed YouTube channels. But they were making money on them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there was no YouTube, but you had movies like this. And you could put that up in the drive-in. And give the kids an excuse to come into the fucking drive-in. Because they weren't watching the movie, per se. Yeah, every now and then you yeah. kind of look up and go, oh, that's kind of Yeah, neat. in between dr- drinking and smoking <laughs> cigarettes and, and getting head or whatever. <laughs> or, or giving head, depending on what your position was. But the um, you might go up and look at it and, and goof on the movie. You know? And then look at the other cars and try to figure out, you know, it's like, well, you know, where's Jason? <laughs> there he is. And then you're talking talk about Jay. Oh, you know who is he's with, and that kind of. You shit, just see you know? like a naked yeah. butt, like where's Eric? Up where's Eric? The where's window. Eric? Where's Eric? Who's he in there? With? Oh, he's with he's with Lisa. All right, <laughs> just shit like that, you know. Because like Eric you, you, and Lisa. Yeah, yeah. You, it's just whatever, and you know, and it might be the couples might be different, you know, because we we you know the, we had a dating culture back then. You didn't everybody dated. Dating wasn't the same as going steady. So everybody was switching up. <laughs> we had to try different ones. Try them out, man. <laughs> try them out. Take them on a test drive. <laughs> the girls were doing the same thing. The I girls know. were doing the same thing. I know. It was it was not, nothing personal. <laughs> the 
you go, you take her out one weekend, and then your boat, your buddy, take her out the next weekend, and then you just flip flop. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like I'm, <laughs> yeah. But that's the way the culture was. We didn't really even get jealous. Granther's probably in the conversation. He'd probably back me up on that. I went to high school with him. He knows exactly who I'm talking about. We didn't get jealous. Yeah, I wonder. I, haven't, I don't think I've seen him. He's today, right out there. You you had to be lame to get jealous back then. <laughs> Only lame pe people that didn't get dates got jealous. Well, as I said, I think that's kind of where this movie was coming from, too. Because, And this is very much like where it reminded me of uh, Let's Scare Jessica to Death, which we did a review of like a long time ago. Because that was a similar thing where, thank you, no need for me to. Get the donations rolling in. Shows are so entertaining. Thank yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Switching up. And thank he's, like, you. laughing. Yeah. Um, Just telling it like it is. Yeah. Or like it was. Uh, because in that movie... Remember, like, it was the, the husband and wife, and then they move to this weird house, and then, like, they have all these, like, weird hippies move in, and they're all, and she's all trying to make moves on the husband and yeah. the wife. Yeah. So it's just, so I feel like there was all this kind of, like, 70s, woo, free love kind of shit. Yeah. And that's kind of what was going on in this, because they don't really give an explanation as to who this Tom person is, yeah. or, you know, why he has these two chicks with him, and what they're even doing there. Like, what are they even doing in this town? I mean, you're kind of led to believe that they came there because, like I said, Tom was interested in legends and he just heard about like the whole blood moon thing going on. And so he's there like interviewing people, but then they don't leave. And that even like when bad shit starts to happen and I don't know. So I've seen a couple people think that maybe he's supposed to be the incarnation of the dark stranger, but like coming back cause it's time for him to come back. But I don't think that really scans because he, well, they don't really show him like he dies at the end, but he's because they go out in the ocean and then like he's suddenly just not there anymore. So maybe he was the dark stranger all mm -hmm. along. I don't know if that was what they were going for. I think that maybe they should have set that up a little bit better. And the two girlfriends he brought with him both get eaten by the townspeople. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't get it. But <laughs> but like I said, it's one of those movies where just, you know, just drop some acid and like just watch it. And don't worry about it too much. Yeah. Because it's just like the imagery is weird and it's just, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like it kind of has a story, but not really, like not anything you need to concern yourself with over much. Um, I think later, like the screenwriters came out and like talked about how they kind of disavowed this movie because they're just like, oh my God, it was like so bad. But I do, I kind of feel like after a time, because it was re-released in the 80s, like under a different title, like I said, it was called Dead People. But it kind of, like, went away. Like, it was kind of, like, went under the radar. And like I said, the only place you could get it was some of those, like, cheap-ass DVD packs with, like, 50 movies on them. It has a choppy edit. Yeah. All right? That's why they don't like it. Some of the recording of the audio track, the audio recordings are kind of rough. Voiceover is pretty rough, the way it was done. Um, it's not a very smooth movie. But it kind of adds to this kind of fucking kind of elicit underground feel to it it feels like an art film it oh it definitely you know, does definitely. it definitely does and it's just 70s as shit it's just kind of like kind of like an upscale version of manos hands of fate which, yeah which i could watch that movie that movie's fucking weird man it's kind of well, creepy. well i i mean i'm really glad that yeah. sort of mystery science theater brought manos back into the public consciousness yeah because that movie is just so strange. It's like, it's bad, but it's just like, it's so entertaining and like hypnotic yeah. because it's so strange. And this one has that same kind of quality to yeah. it. Like I said, it's almost kind of like, I, and I want to say it was a little bit like Deathbed, The Bed That Eats too. But this is like a lot better than that yeah, one because that, that movie no was like boring as shit. Yeah. That was just like, hey, let's go sleep on this bed in this random... The place this in the movie's forest not and it'll boring, suck so you got to give it that. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely not boring. Right. Neither was Manos. Manos wasn't boring either. Because, yeah, because yeah. you're like, the whole time you're like, what the fuck am I watching? Yeah. <laughs> A lot of the problems with Manos and the thing are, are, are what made it interesting. And the <clears> problem really centered around the fact that they had a camera that didn't have any sound recording ability and it could only record about five seconds at a time. I think it was 30 seconds. 30 seconds I think it was time. 30 seconds. So every cut, yeah, 30, that's around five seconds. 30, 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, that would be so a really every weird, fucking be a cut movie. was rough and I think, they, I think they fucking shot the thing in camera if you ask me. 
Oh, I'm sure uh, they did. Yeah, real rough. Well, the guy that made it was not a filmmaker. Right. He, it was just like a hobby. Yeah, and and um, so then I think almost everything was done in one take. Wouldn't surprise me. And um, then they later added voice over to it. They dubbed it, which made it even more shitty looking. But it, it ended up being real creepy when it was done. Yeah, it definitely has that vibe yeah. to it, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and they had weird characters in there. And towards the end, there's this whole fucking coven of witches fucking try, um, worshiping this cult leader. And they're trying to bring the old cult leader back from the dead, if I remember correctly, weren't they? They're bringing him back to life. Or something. Something like it that. It wasn't super clear. <laughs> and nobody's an actor or actress in this movie. Yeah, I think it was like all the dude's friends. Yeah. And at the end, the coven of witches, they're kind of not scantily. It's not that they're scantily clad. They're just wearing these kind of fucking loose-fitting robes that are real kind of sheer. And it, you think porn's going to break out. And it's... And they're actually pretty cute, most of them. So you're like, what the hell's going on? They, they, were, they were wrestling, and I think, I think some Slapping of them... Slapping each other. Yeah, and I think some of them, one of them even killed another one, if I remember correctly. I think they slapped Torgo to death, did Yeah, they that's right. They did all kinds of weird <laughs> shit. You're like, what the fuck is this movie about? But uh, no, I yeah. Ca- I kind of love it, though. Yeah. So this one kind of... I'm kind of... <coughs> it, it's like a high, an upscale version of Manos Hands of Fate. I'll put it at that level. Yeah, it's for sure as weird as that. Yeah, it's as weird as that, but it, it, it's as if you actually knew how to make a movie. Yeah, and is and if you had equipment, an actual like actor, an actual that, actors. that had been in other things. Right. Because one of the weirdest things too about Manos is that so so a lot of the shots, like I said, because the camera couldn't record sync sound. Yeah. Um. So what he would do is like if two characters are having a conversation, he would focus on the one that wasn't talking. Yeah, and yeah. so then there'd be like the other person would be just talking from like off camera yeah, 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 and it was yeah. like really unsettling yeah yeah it's very unsettling <laughs> actually you know if you haven't seen this movie see it but I also want to plug Manos fucking see Manos Hands of Fate too the I mean that shit there man. the Riff Tracks live version of it is yeah. a delight yeah and I think that's actually on Tubi yeah for free like you can watch it yeah. I think it's on Tubi or maybe it's on Pluto yeah, but I think that's all I can say about this movie. Yeah, it's yeah. they like I said, they just added it on Shutter not too long ago, and um, I said, "Ooh, that sounds creepy." And I love like fucking seventies shit. Yeah. And um, I'm actually so we watched it last night. And I'm just like, this is one of the weirdest fucking yeah. movies I've ever seen. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. But it's like, I don't know. You you really have to kind of be in the mood for it because, like I said, it's one of those. Just it, it's almost like watching a dream, like someone's dream, and it doesn't yeah. make a lot of sense. But I don't know. There's something kind of compelling about it, nonetheless. Yeah. And if anybody else watches it, like, let me know. Like, are those people Wendigos? I kind of thought there were maybe Wendigos. Grampus is in there. Grampus, I was just talking about you, man. <laughs> talking about that damn fucking drive-in over there in Trenton. We used to go to. That shit was the fucking... That shit was just the de facto love motel for fucking all the underage high school kids. We'd be up in there fucking seeing whose car was there. Because we knew who they were with. You see the cars fucking in the bounce, in the back bouncing. <laughs> <laughs> bouncing cars. Me and Steve would be up in there fucking with our dates and shit and going, yeah, he's giving it to her good. Look at that fucking car bouncing. That's <laughs> fucking, those, those windows are all steamed up. With, <laughs> shit was fucking funny. It was. Yeah. Actually, Gramther said, why don't you two make a horror movie? You know, it's goth night at Ibar, then a bunch of mundanes show up and out come <sighs> the machetes. <laughs> Actually, if I actually if I was gonna make a horror movie, I would not make a slasher. No, I would make like more of an arty farty, like scary. It's very difficult to make a movie the right way. You yeah, have to have not. a good script, and you have to understand your limitations. And um, the best thing to do would be make something fucking absolutely insane, like Velocipaster. So, that might be the way to go. Yeah. It's just because, like I said, if you if you have those limitations in. Um, you know, and like I said, we were talking about Manos. It's like, I really, I think the idea for Manos was like actually a really good creepy idea. Yeah. Um, it's just, he didn't really have the, the, you know, the expertise yeah. or the equipment or the money yeah. to pull it off the way he wanted, but it was still a good idea. It was a good yeah. concept. And I feel like if you don't have 
the equipment and it's just going to be like look cheap yep. then just lean into it yeah because if you try to make a serious movie and you don't really know what you're doing you're just going to like shoot yourself in the dick he grabs in there grabs in there laughing he is the fort george drive-in that's right is that, is that still there there's very few drive-ins yeah, left in these oh, they, they kind of had a little bit of a resurgence yeah. i feel like but <clears throat> you could probably really update one with some kind of digital projector well, yeah, I think some of them have. And you could change those speakers. See, those speakers had to be, sh be shitty. They were in iron boxes yeah. that were, like, almost chained to the fucking So thing. people so wouldn't you, take so them? You could, no, because <laughs> people would forget to yeah. take them out and drive away <laughs> like that. But, no, you gotta also got to remember that they were out there in the fucking sub-zero fucking weather all the yeah. time and being rained on all the time. They had to be bulletproof. So... They were a, it was basically a squawk box. Yeah. You wouldn't need that nowadays, though, because you could stream it through wireless devices now. Well, I thought back in the old days, yeah. even when I was a kid, I thought that there was like a local, they, they did it like through a local radio station. So you could tune in like on yeah. your radio. Yeah. I mean, right? I thought they some, some of them did that. Yeah, because I, I thought the one we only, went only show only in the it was just like yeah, just right, yeah, just yeah. right around there. Yeah. So you sometimes it'd be like hard to find it, like on the band or whatever. But I remember, yeah. I remember like ones that had that box outside. But I mostly remember tuning it in on the rate on yeah. the car radio. That's how you do it today. Yeah, doesn't make much sense. But that's all. It's all it would be good for is basically a love motel. Well, and I feel like now, like, it, well, just like movie theaters in general, if yeah. you're going to do it, you have to have, like, some kind of theme. You, you know what I mean? You'd right. have to have, like, events. It would have to be, like, an event, like, everybody to go. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know how they have, like, one of the more famous ones is, yeah. um, you know, every now and then they'll show, like, every year they'll yeah. show Jaws, right. but they show it like there's a pool and you, like, yeah. watch it while, while you're in the water, like, in yeah. an inner tube. You know yeah. what I mean? Graham says, no, man, it's long gone. It's now a major big box grocery. Yeah. All right. Uh, he said it still sounded like crap at the radio at Fort George, though, too. Yeah, ours, it started sounding like crap where we yeah. were, too. We used to go to the, um, I think it was just called the Nova Road Drive-In. It You're was right. just on the corner of Nova Road and Hand Avenue. And I was, uh, it's been gone a long time. Yeah. But um, I was in Daytona not too long ago because I went through Daytona going up to St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. And um, there's like a big, yeah, I think yeah. it's a Wawa is there yeah. now or something like that. And maybe like a Caterpillar rental place or some shit. They shouldn't have gotten rid of them. I mean, they did they did serve a fucking a, a important function in society. And that was to keep the kids from fucking in, in, in lover's lanes and getting their shit killed by the damn fucking by, Night Stalker. By the Phantom Killer. The Phantom like Killer the, yeah, or whatever it was, you know what I mean? <laughs> Dex Arcana. Yeah, because sometimes <laughs> we'd have to fucking go out and go hide somewhere, you know, fucking down by the river, you know, there'd be cars parked up. All the cops knew what was going on. Or, ba or behind the church, that's where a lot yeah, of our, that's where yeah, all, all the people I knew went. All like, the cops knew. The church had a big parking lot and you couldn't yeah. see it. Like, <laughs> All the cops knew because they'd fucking drive by and then they wouldn't stop. They knew what was going on back there. Well, it's like then, if, if they stopped and like did that every time, they wouldn't do anything else. You know what yeah, I mean? So it's just, just kind of like, whatever, they it, they're not they hurting let anybody. It fucking, yeah, well, you know, it's better that your kids, you know they're going to the drive and they're contained in that area right there. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, to keep those kids contained. They're keeping them contained <laughs> and they're keeping fucking perverts from out of there or whatever, you know. Well, actually, just, just kid perverts in there. Yeah, kids can be perverts. Too. Oh, you're fucking perverts, yeah. <laughs> fucking right. It's funny. But, you know, there weren't any adults in there. Yeah. Well, we say kids, you know. We didn't think of ourselves as kids back then, you know, fucking... Well, when you're in 15, high school, 16, you're not 17, really a kid 18. anymore. Yeah. Because, you know, right. you're only well, a couple years away from graduating yeah. and getting the fuck out on your own, you know. Yep. Yeah. Louis says there's still some drive-ins in uh, SoCal. Haven't been to one in years. Yeah, I think there's still some. Um, but, you know, they, they tend to do, you know, a special event, I guess, more special event type stuff. Yeah. I think it'd be fun. Although, if it, you know, if they had them in Florida, I think I'd rather go in the fucking wintertime. I'm not going to fucking drive in during have the to summer. Leave, Fuck yeah. that. You'd have to leave the air conditioner running. Yeah, like It'll the whole time. Like the two, yeah, like a whole two-hour movie. Last, I remember going when I was a kid because they used to do, like, all night. They'd do, like, five or six movies, like, one after the other. And it was always, like, a wildly... They didn't even, like, have yeah. themes or anything. It's like, let's show Texas Chainsaw Massacre yeah. 2 and License to Drive. Yeah. Graham's going, I wonder how many teenage boys got their first hand job at Fort George. Probably almost as many stars in the night sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking right. That's pretty funny. Yeah. First time you grabbing titties and shit. Oh. Get that get that off there. 
That's back when back when bras fucking you know fucking in the back. Yeah, I can get it in the back. Well, they still do yeah. in the back. Yeah. Well, you, no, then, then some, no, then later on he started doing them in the front. Yeah, but I had some in the front in high in the front. school. Yeah. And easy access. I, it was, but I didn't love it because sometimes if you just went like that too quick, it would go doink. Yeah. And then you'd be like me and then you'd have to like yeah. reach under your shirt and like yeah. redo it in the middle of class i had yeah. that happen lots and lots of times yeah fucking grab those, <laughs> those i'd be down to drive in with cheryl remember her yeah she was fucking stacked <laughs> fuck man that girl was like a, like a double e huge <laughs> yeah. and her boobs were also contained oh, within man. the drive-in yeah she had a good hourglass figure and everything <laughs> red hair yeah tom's right Graham remembers isn't. her <laughs> yep, he remember. He remembers yep. the last name and everything. Yep. Oh, we're calling her out. Calling her out. You put, the, <laughs> you put the last name in there. Starts with an R. Oh well. Hopefully she doesn't watch this channel. <laughs> no, she's good. I'm, I'm friends. With, I'm friends with her still. Oh, okay. On Facebook. Yeah. Okay. She's cool. Right, she's a then. nurse. She's a nurse now. Oh okay. That's yeah. cool. All right. Do so we have anything else uh, you want to say about this weird ass movie? Nah. That's it. Messiah of Evil. Mm-hmm. Like I said, if you're into 70s surrealism, if you liked Let's Scare Jessica to Death, you'd probably this would probably be right up your alley. Yeah. And it's on Shudder. You can maybe watch it elsewhere, but Shudder just added it not too long ago. We got intrigued. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, drop some acid and watch the shit. Yeah. It's weird as hell. All right. So uh, we will be back tomorrow. We've actually, we're going out tonight. Yeah. So we've already watched the movie that we're going to talk about tomorrow, which is actually a brand new one. So uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is, though, yeah. just because I'm being coy like that. So, yeah, thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us today, and we will talk to you guys again tomorrow afternoon. Bye.